Bună, dragii mei, și bine v-am găsit la un nou episod de pe canalul meu de YouTube. Astăzi am o surpriză pentru voi, pentru că am un invitat special, o persoană pe care îmi doream să o cunosc de foarte mult timp. Ea a scris una dintre cărțile mele preferate și pe care am recomandat-o de foarte multe ori, Elogiul Lentorii, iar astăzi este în România cu ocazia lansării unei alte cărți, de data aceasta la Curtea Veche, așa că suntem colegi de editură. Cartea care se numește Boulder este Cum să profiți de o viață mai lungă. Uh, autorul acestei cărți se numește Carl Honore și este alături de mine. Hi! Um, Hi! I probably didn't understand anything that I have said. <laughs> I'm, I'm understanding more and more Romanian as we go along, actually. Yeah, yeah. So I'm very happy that you are here. I was talking about the, the, the book that uh, I recommended and many people know about it in Price of Slow. And now you are here in Romania for the for the for the for Boulder, mm -hmm. the book that you just launched at Curta Vecchia. So we're colleagues of of publishing house. I understood that part. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really happy and honored that you had the time to talk about your book and uh, other interesting things with us. I'm delighted to be here. Thank so, you. <laughs> Uh, your most recent book, Boulder, tackles a, a subject that is very close to my heart, redefining uh, what it means to get older and the bias that stems from our collective view on ageism. Mm -hmm. What prompted you to this, uh, to this topic? Well, I had a moment of truth where I think, for, like a lot of people, I had a very ageist view of aging, right? I had a dirty, ugly picture of growing older. I want to think about growing older. And when I was 48, I was playing in a hockey tournament, having a great time, I scored an incredible goal, and then it, suddenly I discovered that I was the oldest player in the tournament. And within the blink of an eye, I went from being a goal scorer to a granddad. I hear so many people talking like, oh my God, I cannot do that because I'm old, I don't have energy because I got old. But it's just like exactly how you said, it's self-prophecy. It, 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 it's, a, it's a loop that feeds exactly. back in on itself. Exactly. In fact, ageism is now, I think, the ultimate form of self-harm. What do you think is the secret of longevity and enjoying the life? Well, I think the secret of longevity has many sides to it. A lot of the things we've already heard, you know, you eat a healthy diet, you try not to smoke, you drink alcohol in moderation, if not at all. Stay active Very physically important. is crucial. I mean, exercise is almost like a magic bullet when it comes to aging well, because it's extremely good for the body, but it also refreshes and then recharges our minds you know you're actually building your brain and strengthening you're saying being... something in your book like what you don't use you can't use anymore yeah in english we say use it or lose it you use it exactly, exactly. Use yeah it or lose yeah it. And, and i think that's what happens because we we buy into these ageist stereotypes that say oh i'm too old for this so we stop using something or we stop doing something we stop taking a risk and the moment you do that things begin to fall away. At this age, now we have the maturity to choose what we really want to do, what we, what is really important. Then maybe probably we skipped some things that we didn't like. And it's, we, for me, at, at this age, I feel more mature and I, I feel that I have the, the energy and uh, the capacity to choose better for myself. That is a key to aging better, but it's also a key to the joys of, of growing older. Right? So let's redefine which are the things that we gain while we get older. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing I think anyone over the age of probably 35 or 40 will realize that you start to feel more comfortable in your own skin, oh, yeah. more at ease oh, with yeah. yourself, which is one of the joys of growing older. Yeah. You traveled a lot all over the world while you're writing this book, and I'm sure you met so many interesting people. And I want to know which is the, the most important lesson that you've learned during this, this adventure? Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, in some ways that's a difficult question because there's so many lessons, but you know, one that always jumps out at me is sense of humor. You know, one of the things I found is a common leitmotif thread through mm -hmm. all the people who seemed to be aging in a way that I wanted to age was that they didn't take life that seriously. I mean, they, they were serious oh, yeah. people, but they could see the funny side. Where, they, do you, where do you feel that the most? Where do I feel it personally? Or? No, in, in, your, in the world. It's sort of like a place in the world? Yeah. Or, sort of, Is there like countries oh, where you felt that more than the others? No, I mean, I suppose I live in Britain and Britain is famous for self-deprecating humor and irony. So maybe you see it a bit more there. But actually, I think maybe this is a universal phenomenon mm -hmm. that people who are able to see the light side, mm -hmm. to laugh at themselves, to not take things too seriously. I, I had moments when I, I really lost my humor because, humor because I it was so difficult I, I, through the most difficult situations of my life and I just didn't have that humor anymore. And then I got it back and I realized how important it was and it's so difficult to, to go through life without it. 
Yeah, and I think that's really when people get to the darkest place is when they can no longer laugh. Yeah. And, and that's when people really need big help yeah. to get that spark back, right? I want to go to a very specific topic which is very popular in my industry and related to men and women and related to aging. Mm -hmm. Do you think women are most hit by the prospect of aging given the social constraints of always being beautiful, fresh, young? Or are just also men hit by this? I think we're both hit, but there's no question that women are hit harder. Uh, you know, that's some of that is biology. I mean, women do have certain deadlines for fertility, and mm -hmm. then there's the menopause, which men don't have to contend Thanks, with those. Yeah. And then the whole culture itself is much more oriented towards the idea that female beauty is linked to youth, right? In a way that male beauty, well, we don't even talk that much about male beauty in the same sort of way. No, but a, woman, a, a man, if it's like, has like gray hair or like it's a bit chubby, it's okay. Nobody thinks at him, look at, looks at him like he's getting old. Yeah. But if a woman has like gray hair or like gets a bit chubby, it's like, oh, she's old. Yeah. Well, I mean, he, he looks nice. He looks very mannish. Like, yeah, well, and gray she's hair old. Is, gray hair is a very good example because a woman who ha has gray hair in say her 40s, and a man, a man is aging well. You know, he's, yeah, he's aging he's, well. He's becoming a silver he fox. Nice. Exactly. Right? He looks distinguished. Or a woman is letting herself go. You know, why isn't she coloring her hair? Exactly. You know? Shame on her. She's letting down the side. He's getting to the normality. Or normal. I mean, normality is something very relative. But he's getting to the. You don't have to look that perfect, that perfect skin, perfect yeah. body. Though it's the contradiction what you see on Instagram and social media. Everybody has to be like perfect skin. Yes, there's a long way to go. But you know, the the, the thing is starting to move. I think the needle is beginning to move on this. Even on that really difficult. One very slow, female, young, very slow. It is, it's yeah, maybe, slow. maybe bad slow. Has your perspective on aging changed after writing this book? Completely. I have a very clear before and after, and my before is pretty shameful. I had a terrible view of aging. I, I looked down on older people, and I didn't really want to think about my own aging because I just thought it was all bad. Okay. And now I am completely different. I don't. I, I have a completely open mind about people of different ages. And my own aging, I'm, I'm, I'm no longer afraid. I'm doing that David Bowie thing of, I'm gradually becoming the person I was always supposed to be. You're embracing it. Yeah, and I'm open to it, right? I'm embracing it. And I, I watched my, I have a TED talk from 2005, so I we're talking. I watched it very, uh, very right? nice. So I've, 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 I was 14 years ago, for, that, was, that was 14 years ago. <sighs> and I watched it for the first time ever last week. No way, the, I, I never, don't believe that. No, I never watched it before because I hate watching myself on TV. I never watch myself on TV. Because I had a fear that I would say, I would feel bad now about being 51. I think, oh, I wish I were that age. And I saw myself and no. I just thought, you poor little boy. You know, I was 36 or something and I just thought, I don't know, I look so unsure of myself. No, but it was really, you had, I felt you were a bit nervous. Yeah. But it was fun. I mean, you were talking about so many nice things and with a lot of humor and... It was me, but yeah. somehow it felt like it was not as, I felt like I'm a better version of that now. I, I thought, I was worried that I would watch it and think, oh dear, those 15 years have been very cruel to me. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I've, 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 this aging is terrible. I better not do any more of it, right? But I didn't, I thought, you know, Okay, you know, that was good. I was having a good time then. So I, uh, I read and I recommended to my community uh, one of your books, In Praise of Slow, that I loved and I applied many of those things. And I love how, the way you're writing. Which is the most satisfying part for you when you're writing? I love words. I love the way they sound. I it's love obvious. the way they look on the page. <laughs> it's obvious. Yeah, and I, love, and I like talking and I love different languages and so on. I, I think the most satisfying for, thing for me is when you get a sentence just right. You know, just that you... The, How do you know it's just right? I think it, it must be like when you're, well, not that I'm Mozart, but you know, you, <laughs> he's sitting there composing and you, all the notes just fall into place. Would you agree with Rilke who said, if one feels one could live without writing, the one shouldn't write at all? <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> Yeah, I think maybe I too agree with that. I mean, there's no obligation as a human being to write. Uh, and writing, many people can't write that well. Right? There are other ways. I mean, writing f is a way of getting from one place to another. And for me, it's a way of understanding myself and the world. But I think other people can find other ways to do that. You could do music, you could paint, you could go for a walk, you could just meditate and reflect. I mean, there, there, may, there must be many other channels for getting 
to understanding, I think, maybe. I don't Thank you so much, Carl. Thank, Thank you, you very much for, for the book, for all the inspiration and for your time. And Thank now you. I need an interview and uh, I, I need an autograph. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs>